Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, in this little video I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I got in YouTube. So this is going to be like a little and quick Q&A session. So one of the questions was how can we change the color of the backside of our pieces? So by default the the color the, the color the, and the material that it's using is the same on the front and the back and on the sides. But we can change this. In fact, I would recommend to everyone that depending on the project, instead of adding two layers so that we have two different materials, maybe on the outside and on the inside, we want a different material. Instead of adding two physical layers, uh, change the material, just the material. Uh, this can have several advantages. The first one is going to be the simulation is going to be more stable and um, we are going to avoid a lot of headaches. So how can we do this? Um, here you can see that this is the default material. So it's uh, it, the, the front is white and then the backside is this gray color. If we go here to the fabric and we click on it, in the property editor, we are going to be presented with these parameters. If we go down to this drop down to the material section, we can see these three tabs, front, back and the side. So the front is where we can specify the color that this is going to have so we can change the color of the of the shirt and we can add our textures and normal map but then we have the back and the side so if we click on the back side we can see this is checked on so this is this square box here tells the program to use the same material uh, that on the inside that it's on the outside but we can check this off if we do this, we can specify the color of the backside. So we can change this here and even change the shader to be silk satin or whatever. Now you can see that nothing has changed. And this is because right now the program is not displaying the backside of the garment. So if we go to these buttons here, this one, it's the how the surface of the of the garment is rendered so right now it's in the texture surface or the or the flat surface right and if we are in these two modes we cannot see the backside properly to do this we have to change to rendering with the thick surface if we do this we can see now that we can see the backside properly with the values that we have established so if i change this to metal it's going to be made of metal and we can change the color independently now this alone does not give the appearance of having two layers to do this we have to do another another step and this is per piece so if we click here on the color and we go to the property editor let me collapse this we don't need this so if we go to the simulation properties here we have this additional thickness and additional rendering. So for now, we're going to leave this alone, but the additional thickness and rendering, this does not affect the simulation, but it can add some thickness that only it's viewable in the rendering. So it's, it's just a uh, visual, uh, visual aid. So if we can, we can just add one millimeter or just so that we can see the effect we can add three millimeters of the fabric. So now we can see that it's thicker, but still doesn't look that there are two layers. To do this, we can go to the selected line. And here we have in the curved side geometry dropdown, we have this, uh, this option that says double sided. If we do this and we click on on, and if we wait for the program to think maybe now you can see that the with some rendering trickery we can see that now there is uh the illusion that there are two different layers stitched on one another it's just one layer but uh we can see that there's just there's a line now in the middle suggesting two different layers Right now this is uh, crazy with the gold, but you can see how this could be used if two layers are of the same material or 
the second material is uh, is glued on on the other one. In any in the cases that we are not uh, that we don't want the, the the second layer to be very noticeable. Like for example, if you want a second layer to be uh, of a different size or filled with anything, if the second layer is going to go almost glued to the other one, this is the best option because it's going to the simulation is going to be way more stable. If we simulate. Um, I just have to move one layer and not two, so there are not going to be penetrations or anything. Now, the last thing we can do is if we go to the fabric again, we have the side materials, and we can also mess with this if we want more effects. So I can, again, change this to another color. Now the only downside here is that, as you can see, it applies the same to both of them. So if we want extra realism, of course, we are going to use two different layers. But um, if we want something quick or if we are going to export this anyway uh, to ZBrush or whatever, um, this two, uh, this seam, I think is going to, it's, it's, I think the mesh has I don't know how can I view it, but I think this is uh, geometry, uh, so I think it will get exported if you export it as a thick mesh, um, so you can use it anyways. Now the second question was, um, so it says that when when Bao Bao says, when I stitch uh, in two layers, a lot of bubble-like air appears in the cola, and how to fix this. Now, I'm not very sure what the problem might be, but I'm going to show you the, the best way you can add a layer on, on a cola like this. So it's very simple. We have to open the 2D view and when we right click on the pattern, we can just layer clone under or over. In this case, since the color is uh, turned over, we can, well, it doesn't matter actually. Let's choose over. Now, when you do the layering by hand, it's going to be very unstable because a lot of things are not going to be clicked or put in the right place. When you layer clone, the program takes all the right options so that those two layers are sewn properly with the right uh, settings and also they it's much more stable than if you do it yourself so now after cloning those now we have obviously a sandwich of uh, four layers and now the simulation should go properly the um, the layer clone option is usually very stable even even in in this cases where the fabric is actually turned over and there's a lot of risk of penetration. But as you can see, even though it's jittery and it's not that stable in the sense that it's, it doesn't stay still, um, there is no craziness going on, which is actually very common in when you're dealing with multiple layers. So I hope, I hope this, uh, this quick video is, uh, has been of helpful. I thought this was a better idea than uh, answering in YouTube. That way it's uh, more visual and I don't have to explain anything in words, which I am not good at. So hope you found this helpful and to the rest, um, be patient with my next video. I have a lot of work and yeah, it takes a lot of time to make a video like that. So yeah, thank you very much and till the next time.